Hello Booktube, this is Leo from A Little Book Life. Did you read Juan's latest video from the channel Just One Reader? It's about the books that he feels might be potential five star reads. And at the end he tagged basically the whole of Booktube. So I've myself felt tagged indeed. So. I went through my bookshelves today and picked 12 books and decided to create a project to read one of them every month in the next year, the Five Star Potentials project. So every month I will report back and let you know whether the book of that month lived up to my expectations of it. The first one is Where the Line Bleeds by Jasmine Ward. By what I gather from the description on the back of the book, this is typical Jasmine Ward, a rural town in Mississippi, a family story, twins being raised by a blind grandmother, addiction. Earlier I read her novels Sing Buried Sing about similar themes and Salvage the Bones, which is set during Hurricane Katrina. And I also read her lovely little book Navigate Your Stars in which she um, reminisces upon her childhood and uh, the way she decided to become a writer. She is one of my favorite writers and I cannot imagine why this one won't be just as good. Then there is The City of Shy Hunters by Tom Spanbauer. I have read two other novels by him, the first one being Now is the Hour, and last year I buddy read with Sarah from Hardcover Hearts, I Loved You More. Both of them were stunning novels, deeply moving. Now is the Hour is a coming of age novel about a gay adolescent living on a farm in rural America, and I Loved You More is the heartbreakingly beautiful story of friendship and how a gay man's best friend is the love of the main character's life and how this gets intertwined with his female best friend. Next is a novel by Canadian writer Guy Gabriel Kay, of which I am a huge fan. I read many of his novels, the best among them being Tigana, A Song for Arbany, Children of Earth and Sky, and a brightness long ago. He writes about a world and continents that are just like our own, only slightly different, and therefore it is actually fantasy, but only slightly so. Magic is barely existent in them. His books will appeal, I think, to both lovers of a very well-written literary fantasy and historical fiction. Where the previous ones that I read were set in France and Italy in Renaissance-like worlds, this one, River of Stars, is set in what feels and looks very much like ancient empirical China. Except for his debut novels, the Fiona of our Tapestry series, no novel by Kay has disappointed me. I think he is a master storyteller, so this one has high potential to be a five-star read. Rick McDonnell, who is also a huge fan of Guy Gabriel Kay, made a special video about this novel on his channel not so long ago. Then I want to read The Illuminaries by Eleanor Catton. I started reading this one a few months ago as a buddy read with Ollie Bliss, but Ollie did not get along with this novel, so we stopped it and turned to E.M. Forster's Howard's End instead, that we both liked. So I already had a first taste of the Illuminaries and I really did like it. Even better, I was hooked by it. So it is a potential great read for me that I want to do somewhere in the next year after all. It is set in 1886 when a new immigrant arrives in New Zealand and right on his first night there, he comes across a group of 12 men gathering in the lounge of his hotel, where they discuss a mystery in which the main protagonist gets entangled. Another one is 
Nobody's Fool by Richard Russo, the writer of the Pulitzer Prize winning novel Empire Falls, which I read years ago and adored. This one says on the back that it is set in a deadbeat town and it follows the life of one of its unluckiest citizens, Sully, who has been doing the wrong thing triumphantly for 50 years. That description, together with my love of the way Empire Falls was written, predicts a really good read. When it comes to five-star reads, Charles Dickens cannot fail to deliver. My favorite Victorian novel is his David Copperfield, Five Stars. Last month I buddy read Bleak House with Sarah from Hardcover Hearts, also five stars. At the moment I am devouring Dombey and Son, and next month I will be buddy reading Our Mutual Friend with Loretta Webb, one of my subscribers. The Mystery of Edwin Drood is Dickens' final novel, which he left unfinished when he died suddenly of a stroke in 1870. The first half of the novel that he did write is regarded by many as one of his finest writings. The story is about Edwin Drood, who mysteriously disappears, and since Dickens wrote in installments that were published immediately after he wrote them, there was not a single clue left after his death of how the story would develop. Several writers have tried to finish it. The one by David Madden that I have here is regarded as being written in true Dickens spirit. Earlier this year I read the absolutely stunning novel The Last Thing You Surrender, a gripping novel about racism in the 40s of last century, in daily life and in the military. It was a group read organized by Didi from Brownville Reading and it was one of the best novels I have ever read. Five stars without any doubt. So well written, characters you care very much about and a story that grips you right from the beginning up to the very last page. I cannot recommend this novel highly enough. There were over 50 readers present at the live discussion at the end of the group read. Literally every single one of them was raving about it. That is already something extraordinary. Please look past the rather unappealing cover. It is misleading. This is excellent literature. I plan to read his novel Grand Park next year. The blurb on the cover says, A taut thriller that weaves together a stark look at America's tortured racial past with a fast-paced tale of terrorist conspiracy and love rekindled. Another favorite writer of mine is Daphne du Maurier. I love all of her work, though the older she got, the higher I rank her writings. Last month I read her 1971 short story collection Don't Look Now, which was another whopping five-star read for me, especially the title story itself. I mean, if you want to experience what can be done in the space of one short story, then read that one. It is mind-blowing. So I now want to read another short story collection by her, her 1951 The Breaking Point. A few months ago I hosted a group read of The Overstory by Richard Powers. Somewhere at the end of it, this novel Greenwood by Canadian writer Michael Christie came up. And when I looked into it, this one sounded very promising. Set in the year 2038, where the main character is a tour guide in one of the world's last remaining forests. And when I read this sentence on one of the flaps, and throughout there are trees, a steady, silent pulse, thrumming beneath Michael Christie's effortless sentences, working as a guiding metaphor for withering, weathering and survival. I was sold. Then a fantasy novel by one of the absolute masters of the genre, Robin Hobb. I have read 12 of her novels by now, most of them I have read several times and she just keeps amazing me. 
To be honest, I am a little bit wary about this new to me series that I plan to read, the Soldier Son trilogy, because I am afraid that especially after her Farseer books that I adored from book one right up to book nine, this one will not live up to that, to that five star series. But I watched a video by Chris from Bookish Cauldron some time ago in which he, as a fellow hop lover, spoke very highly of them. And that's what made me decide to read this series. Okay, we are at number 11, which is Scoop by Evelyn Woe, another great writer of which I read his masterful novels Bright's Head Revisited and A Handful of Dust. Scoop is about Lord Copper, a newspaper magnet, who sends a new reporter to cover the war in the African Republic of Ishamelia. According to the back cover, one of Woe's most exuberant comedies. And finally, a novel by another writer who has never disappointed me, A Place Called Winter, by a British writer Patrick Gale. Set in Edwardian time, where a married Englishman travels to a town called Winter, in the newly colonized Canadian prairies, he falls in love with another man there. I read Patrick Gill's novels, Rough Music, Notes from an Exhibition, which I both loved, and then earlier this year I read his latest, Take Nothing With You, which surpassed for me even the first two I read. So good chances there will be another five-star Gale novel next year. So, there you go. Twelve books that have five-star potential to read over 12 months in 2021. Every month I will tell you about the one I picked for that month and if it indeed was a five-star read. Thank you for watching. And bye-bye.